What's up guys, welcome back. Today I'm showing you what you can do with some of your leftover chicken or turkey from Thanksgiving. Today we're making pot pie. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. All right, let's get in the kitchen and make it happen. We're gonna need one yellow onion, a couple carrots, some celery, a few Bella mushrooms that we cleaned thoroughly with a damp paper towel, and some fresh parsley, along with some minced garlic or garlic paste. Break out your hatchet like you see me doing here. This knife is from Dow Strong. I'll link to it in the description box below. Chop the ends off of your carrots and peel them nicely like you see here. And then we're just going to cut them up. I like to make one slice down the middle and one or two uh, long ways and then we're going to spin them around and just dice them up. Same deal with the celery. Try to make sure your vegetables are all about the same size so they cook at the same rate. You don't want some veggies being tender and some being raw. So just shoot for the same size as you're dicing up your celery and carrots here. Looking good. I'm loving this new cutting board I got from Mac Cutting Boards on Instagram. Check them out. And then we're just going to slice up our uh, mushrooms here also. No right or wrong way to do this, you just want the mushrooms to be bite-sized pieces. Keep in mind that these veggies do shrink down quite a bit as they cook. And this give a nice rough chop to your parsley. Fresh parsley adds some nice fresh flavor to this dish, and of course a pop of color. What you don't see here are frozen peas, you'll need those as well. I'll show you those in just a minute. All right, now we're on to our onion. We're gonna dice up one whole onion. Again, no right or wrong way to do this. Chop your onion up whichever way you feel most comfortable. This is a great recipe to use when you have some leftover veggies in the fridge and any leftover turkey from Thanksgiving like you see here or a leftover rotisserie chicken or roast chicken. I will link to one of my roast chicken recipes as well. Just a great way to use some of that leftover uh, meat that you have in the fridge. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below. Now we're moving on to our Dutch oven where I am adding about six tablespoons of butter, one tablespoon of chicken base, if you can't find that, you can use turkey base, veggie base, or just use chicken bouillon from the store. Just move that butter around so that it melts nicely. Our heat's on about medium right now. Once the butter is nice and melted, we're going to start with the vegetable that takes the longest to cook. So we're going in with our carrots first. We'll get them a head start, saute them for two to three minutes. Now we're going in with the rest of our veggies, the onions, the celery, the parsley, the mushrooms. And then we're gonna saute that for three to five minutes or until the veggies become uh, nice and tender. Looking good so far. Your house is smelling amazing at this point. We're going in with one tablespoon of garlic paste and some Italian seasoning, which has some nice rosemary, thyme, things like that in there. This is gonna have your kitchen smelling absolutely fantastic, like Thanksgiving all over again. As always, guys, continue to move this around. Make sure you get everything off the sides and off the bottom. You don't want anything sticking, because if it sticks, it's gonna burn, and we don't want that. It's about one cup each of the vegetables. So you got one cup of celery, one cup of onions, one cup of carrots. Now we're going in with our flour to create a roux, which is gonna be the uh, thickening agent for this uh, filling that we're using for our pot pie. That's about a third cup of flour total. We're gonna mix that in until it forms a paste. And then we're gonna cook it for about two to three minutes to work out that raw flour taste.
There we go. That's exactly what you're looking for. It should be nice and thick. You don't want it to burn. So just keep moving it around over medium heat. And then we're gonna add in our chicken stock. About two cups of chicken stock to be exact. You may need a little bit more on the side just in case you need to thin this filling out a little bit later. But right now we're adding two, uh, two cups of chicken stock. And you're gonna mix that thoroughly with your rubber spatula just to make sure there's no lumps. Bring that up to a boil and then we're gonna add in our heavy cream. About a half cup of that heavy cream, mix that in. Once it reaches a boil, we're gonna reduce that to a simmer. Now we're going in with that leftover turkey or leftover chicken. That's about four to five cups of leftover turkey right there. Again, this is great with leftover chicken. Now this ingredient might surprise you, but we're adding about a teaspoon or so of soy sauce for umami and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. We're gonna mix that in as well. Again, guys, all the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below. Make sure to check that out. And we're just gonna keep mixing, making sure we get everything off the sides. We want our sauce nice and smooth, smoother than a three-day weekend. You wanna taste as you go and adjust the season into your preference. I'm gonna add a pinch or two of this chicken bouillon. Adding in a little bit of salt and pepper. Man, this stuff is good. I could eat this with a spoon just like this, straight out the pot. Can't wait for you guys to try this recipe. Let me know how you make your chicken pot pie in the comments, or if you're a fan of chicken pot pie, let me know. Now we're going in with one cup of frozen peas. Wanna mix that in. Those peas will uh, defrost and cook during the baking process. Just a splash more chicken stock just to thin it out a little bit. You don't want it to be too thick. Man, that looks good. Growing up, we used to eat the uh, little $1 pot pies that were frozen and they were awful. So I grew up with a you know, bad first impression of pot pies, but that quickly changed when I had a homemade one. Can't wait for you guys to try this one. Just went in with a little red pepper flakes just to spice things up a little bit. That's optional. And then I'm gonna adjust the seasoning again as, as you should too. So always taste as you go and adjust as needed. Added a little bit more salt. Now you want to flour a big cutting board or your countertop because we're gonna roll out our pastry dough. This is store bought because this is the day after Thanksgiving and uh, who wants to do all of that work? So we're using store bought to make it nice and easy for you guys. Make sure to defrost it based on your package instructions and then get your rolling pin out and roll it until it's about a quarter inch thick. There we go. Super simple recipe that packs a lot of flavor. Great meal prep option. Now we're gonna get our pie dish ready. You wanna lay the uh, pastry dough over the top of the pie dish and then you wanna lift it up and kinda let it fall in place. You don't wanna overstretch it because it'll rip. So just let the pie crust uh, do its thing. Use your hands to kind of guide it in, in place, like so. And if you mess it up, just call it rustic. Nobody will know the difference. Once you got it in place, cut off the uh, excess pie crust around the edges. A little bit of hangover is a good thing. And then we're gonna fill it with our filling. You do wanna let the filling cool for about 15 to 20 minutes before you put it in here because you don't want it to be too hot because that might cause your pie crust to rip also. So don't overfill it, fill it to about the top, give it a little bit of space to breathe, and then smooth things out. Looking good. Now we're gonna roll out our second pie crust. 
We'll make this a little bit quicker for you guys since you saw the first one. But same deal, roll it out so it's about a quarter inch thick. And then lay that over top. Break out your scissors again and then we're gonna cut any excess off, kind of form fit it to the pan or to the dish. And then very important, you wanna tuck the top layer behind the bottom layer, as you see me doing right here and just go around the entire pie crust and do that same thing. Tuck the top behind the bottom. And then use your finger to kind of make it pretty. Use two fingers to pinch the uh, dough around the one pointer finger there. You can create whatever design you want, really. Looking good. One of the most important steps here is to, you wanna make sure that you make some slits in the top. That way the steam has uh, room to escape. I carved a nice M with like a third grader's handwriting there. But you can just make a little diamond or star or whatever you wanna do. We're getting in our arts and crafts bag right now. Then you wanna brush over some melted butter just to help it brown a bit. You can use an egg wash too, so you can whisk one or two eggs in a bowl and then brush that over. Eggs or butter works perfectly fine here. And just brush it evenly over the crust. Hit it with a little bit of uh, sea salt. And then we're gonna pop that in a 350 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes or until it's nice and brown like so. Hit it with a little finely chopped parsley just for a pop of color. And then you have to let this rest for at least 30 minutes so it cools off a bit. And then after it's cool, it's time to give you guys a trademark money shot. I tried to cut this like an actual pie. Of course I failed, so we ended up just breaking out the scooper. But a delicious pot pie nonetheless. Oh, here we go. A little food porn action. Looking good. We're gonna plate this up because you know I gotta give this a try. A little bit more parsley just because. You know what, I'm coming right in here and getting me a scoop fresh out of the pan. Make sure you get some of that crust. You know this is gonna be hot. Come on, Matt. Mm. I think that says it all, guys. This recipe is absolutely delicious. Can't wait for you to try it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for your support.